welcome to Code Rush, Feature of the Week. So, Mark, what have we got this week? This week, Rory, uh, I'm going to call this one Bringing It All Together. Ah. Bringing it all together. We're going to come in here. We're going to create a new project from scratch. We'll create a new console app. I'm just going to call it Console App 1. And uh, we're going to go to town and start creating something here. Um, okay. Uh, let me ask you this, uh, Rory. Do you like beer? I do. You do? Yeah. Well, I am not an alcohol drinker for some reason. I know a lot of people think I'm on it at all times, but uh, <laughs> I'm not. But what I would like to do is I'd like to actually start creating uh, some code. And I want to use a lot of the features that we've already talked about in the coders feature of the week. And I want to yep. talk about specifically two things. I want to talk about essentially high speed coding, coding quickly, and mm -hmm. what the real benefits are to a developer and uh, and I also want to reference, make reference to f things and features we've already talked about. So sure. I'm going to try and shout those out. I'm going to try and put links down in the description for all of these individual features that we're using and going through as we do this. Sounds okay? good. Yep. So uh, uh, let's create. Let me ask you this, Roy. Do you like beer from a particular country more than any others? Uh, I like a bit of Australian beer occasionally. Australian beer. All right. So let's yeah. do it. We're going to create a new class. And uh, we're going to call that uh, Australian beer. Notice it kind of okay. takes me a while to type that in right there. And you can see over here, uh, I guess, two things. One, I'm not blazingly fast at typing this part, right? Uh -huh. um, yep. Uh, up here, you can see the second thing is you can see all the keys I press. So I, we're, this is going to keep me totally honest. You're not going to be. Yeah. I won't be able to get away with anything without you seeing this. Uh, no if, special tricks here. Right. If I'm typing, you'll see this change. If I'm not <laughs> typing, we won't. So um, uh, I'm using the C template to create a new class. And we covered that already in our types feature of the week uh, we did. video. I'm going to hit enter to get down inside this. Now we want to create some beer. It's from Australia. Uh, what kinds of properties might this beer have? Okay. Well, I mean, the most obvious one is the name. The name. Okay. So yep. that's going to be a string. I'm going to use a AS right there to get that and type in the word name. AS yep. is an auto implemented property uh, of type name. What else do we have? What other kind of properties? Um, well, we're going to want uh, percentage like volume alcohol. Okay. So that's going to be of what type would you say? Uh, I'm going to say that's a decimal. Okay. Decimal. Let's make that a property with backing store. So instead of using A for auto implemented, we'll use the letter P for property, right? With backing sure. store. So we're going to say uh, P, and you said decimal, is that right? Yep. So PDE is going to give me a property type decimal. I'm going to call this percent alcohol. Okay. Like that. And you can see I'm slow when I do that, but now when I hit enter, I'm coming back down here. Um, by the way, you can see the total keys we've pressed are right here. Most of the keys are for the names of the things, right? Shift B yeah. here, right? Shift A Australia. Right, you can see all of those things all the way down here, right? I've and short of reading your mind, there's just no way around that. That that's pretty much the that that's your brain with its content emptying onto the page. Right. Also, we discussed in advance we're not going to talk about the reading your mind feature as it's still in development. Okay. Oops. And it requires cranial surgery. So we're <laughs> Yeah. You know, so some people consider that a side effect. All right. So we've got our we've got our percent alcohol. We've got this piece right here. Let's say we wanted to create another decimal based property, like for example, price. We just mm -hmm. select that and we're going to hit shift enter on that, like that. And now we're going to call it price, like this, and hit enter. And notice we're right at the That's end. That's right. That's, that yep. was duplicate line right there. I used shift enter, typed in price, hit enter, and I'm done. Now that I'm here, let's say I want a third property just like this. I just hit shift enter one more time and I come in here and I say what this is going to be. Maybe we'll call this uh, weight. Like this. So there's example. no specific need. I haven't done it once to go back and select again. It's got that still in memory, ready to go set third time. Right. Duplicate selection, duplicate line. I use shift enter and you're seeing that there. Um, and then I just hit in. Notice, by the way, also it gets the property name uppercase, even though I'm typing a lowercase name in here. Yep. Hit enter and I'm done. I can keep repeating that if I want to. That's my new Australian beer. I'm going to right click this and choose use type in templates. I'm going to give it a mnemonic, a shortcut of AB for Australian beer. I'm going to click OK, OK like that. Now I want to create a case of beer. I'm going to model a factory for producing these using Australian beer. And so I'm going to need a truck, and I'm going to need a case of beer, um, and I'll need even maybe a customer as well to consume it. 
So we're going to come up here. We're going to type in C again. We're going to say this is going to be uh, maybe uh, an Australian uh, beer case like that, for example. Yep. And uh, I will uh, I will uh, hit enter on that. And now inside the beer case, what does that contain? Well, it's going to contain some beers, that presumably a, a quantity of beers. Right. And how would you like to store those? Would you like to store those in a generic list, in an array? What's your What's your favorite way of doing that? Uh, I'm I'm pers partial to lists because I'm I'm all re really bothered about the count, all not right. so much of the arrangement within. I totally agree. So let's do a generic list of Australian beers. So I'm going to use a template uh, for creating a new list of Australian beers, and it looks like this. And so. If we look at those individual pieces, it's created, N stands for new, L stands for list, and the dot means it's generic. AB is the Australian beer that we just created. I'm going to do this. Yeah. We're going to call this beers like this. All right, so that NL.AB, that's part of the generic templates, and we covered that already in a feature of the week. I'm going to copy beers to the clipboard because I know I'm going to need that in a little bit. Notice, Rory, uh, all I have to do is I have to hit Control-C. I did not select it first. And then Codrush right. selected it. Um, at this point, I'm just going to hit enter and enter to get out to the end of the line. Uh, by the way, just to, to further demonstrate those generics, if I wanted to create a new queue of Australian beers, I would do that, right? If I yep. wanted to create a new stack of Australian beers, I would do that, right? If I want to create yep. a new list of ints, I, a new list of ints, I would do that, right? So that's what's happening. That's how easy it is to write. This that is the code. most minimal way to write code like this. It's absolutely fantastic. Exactly. And you can get that through templates. OK, so um, check out that video if you want to see that and you want to learn more. Now let's create a method that returns a decimal. So I'm going to type in M for method and DE for decimal like that. And now I'm going to say call this get total uh, weight like this. Did I get it? I got it spelled correctly. And there yeah. you can see again, here it is again. These are all the keys I've pressed up to this point, and this is all the code we've generated, right? So you can see yeah. there's kind of a compression that's going on here, right? Oh, massively. Yeah, so a get total weight, it doesn't take any parameters. I'm just gonna hit enter on there. I wanna return instance uh, uh, in here, a result instance. I think I covered this in Mark's favorite templates. I think I, I think did. maybe you did, yeah. Uh, so you take a look in there. Um, the uh, Related to that is another one called NINST, which is for new instances, which is uh, useful. Uh, now inside here, by the way, this is a marker, this right here. Yours might look a little different. We're changing the look of it, uh, going back to uh, uh, the older style, which is easier to see, uh, and mm -hmm. a little rounded corners on the bottom. Uh, this is gonna be new in the next release, and we're recording this before that release is out. So if you don't, yours don't quite match up, don't worry, they work the same way. Just but again, either, either way, there's a, a visual indicator of where you were or where you want to be right. at, at a given point in time. Right, and see the markers feature of the week for more information. Um, Indeed. The essence of this is I can hit escape to collect that, pick that up, put the carrot right where I want it to be very fast. Now, mm -hmm. remember, I copied beers to the clipboard. Now I want to iterate through those Australian beers. So I want to okay. create a for loop, a for each loop rather. Watch over here, look at the keys I'm pressing. F, E, and then I'm gonna expand that with the space bar. My hands are off the keyboard. That's Now look at that. All Not I only have we in. got the collection, but we've got the type and a derivative name for the instance of the type as you go through the list, all calculated based off the logical uh, information in place that CodeRush has picked up on. Exactly. And now I'm gonna type in uh, result uh, plus equals uh, Australian beer dot, and do I have some property called weight? I do, like that. There we go. Okay, not bad. I'm done with the Australian beer case, except for, you know what? I want this to play with my templates too. So I'm gonna say use type in templates. I'm gonna call this ABC, like that. Yep. Now I've got an Australian beer case. Let's create a truck real quickly. I'm gonna type in C again uh, for class, type in tr uh, truck, hit enter. Uh, now I wanna have a new list of Australian beer cases like that. Yep. And then we're gonna say those are our cases. Uh, I'm gonna hit enter. Uh, let's create a new method that returns a decimal like this. Uh, get uh, total uh, weight like this, like this and this. And then we're gonna come in here again. We're gonna type in uh, RI for get our result instance there. And then we're gonna say it at equal to uh, zero. Hit escape to get inside. FE down in here. And then I wanna say uh, result uh, plus equals uh, Australian beer case. 
a dot and I bet we need to guess what drop a marker here because I need to come back because get total weight is private and I want to make that public Fair enough. so I'm going to cycle visibility I just use alt up and down arrows to cycle through the different visibilities very fast right done yep get back with escape now I can see get total weight is in there there's the call and now I've got the total weight of the truck, which calculates the total weight of each case, which calculates the total weight of each beer in its collection, right? Very nice indeed. Very nice indeed. Look at what we've got here. We've got the beer. We've got the crate of beer. We've got the truck carrying the crates of beer. There's quite a lot of code here, and there's really not many characters been used to create it. That's right. Let's come in here. We'll create one last class. This is going to be a customer. All right. And let's create okay. one method in this customer, and let's let have this method be. Uh, I want to create a method called uh, set favorite. Whoops, let me do. Let me fix that. Favorite beer, like that. And I want to yep. pass a beer into it. If I want to pass in a beer, I'm going to use V for variables. That was another feature of the week that we did, Rory. It was indeed, yeah. V, v for, for variables. variables. So V followed by AB for Australian beer. And there, I have passed mm -hmm. in that class name. Uh, we'll call this uh, uh, beer. Oh, by the way, look at this. This is a feature we haven't That's talked nice. about yet. Not much, no. But it is uh, the naming assistant. I can just hit down arrow, hit enter if I want to pick that as a particular name. I might, mm -hmm. uh, I, I might change this, though, to say, let's call this new favorite beer. Like, oh, look at the naming assistant, what it's doing for me. <laughs> let's take it. Fine, I'll take That's it. That's good. Right? Now, I want to show you one more killer feature. Uh, let's say that we want to uh, also pass in an old favorite beer. Well, there's okay. a couple ways we could do this, right? We were out here. We could just come in here again and type in VAB again, right? We could. For variable of a type Australian beer. It's going to add a comma for me automatically. Watch it. Boom. And then I can type nice. in old favorite beer. But, oh, my gosh, that's going to take me so long. I don't want to do that, Rory. I don't have that much time. I want to think about my code, not, not spend mm -hmm. my time writing it. So instead, right. I'm going to select just the word new because I want to change the word new to old. And I'm going to hit shift enter and type in old and I'm done. <laughs> that is pretty impressive. All right, Mark. That is very nice. And let's do one more thing. Let's pass in one more variable uh, of type date. So I'm going to type in VD8 like this and there'll be a date time. D8 means date. And so V means yep. variable. It adds the comma for me. And I'll just say uh, the change date like this. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna, oh, look at this. It's giving it to me. I'll take that one right there. Nice. Now what I want to do is, you ever, you ever been in that situation, Rory, where you're on a parameter and you want yep. to have either a field variable or a property of the same name, essentially, in the class? Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's where we are right now. I want to store this favorite beer. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to choose, I'm going to hit the code rush key, choose declare, and choose uh, declare property with initializer. Then I'll select where I want that property to be. I'll put it down here. And then it gives me uh, the property name. I'm just going to change the name of this to favorite beer like that. Okay. Yep. And we'll do that. And um, hold on, Rory. I just noticed this is not showing me the keys I'm pressing anymore. It looks like I've got uh, some sort of limit on the visualizer. I'm just going to right click this, choose clear so we can see more keys as we move forward here. Sure. My apologies for that. I wasn't aware that was going to be an issue we were going to deal with there. So there's our favorite beer right there. We can do the same thing. Come back in here again, declare property with initializer. There's our old favorite. We'll save that as well, right? Feels mm -hmm. uh, pretty good. The only thing is we can, we can escape to get back here to where we started these. The only thing is I don't like this parameter order. I want to change the order no. of parameters. Seems more chronological to start with old and then proceed to new. Exactly. And I'm going to start with a change date. So I'm going to choose this, move this over here like this, tab, tab, select this, move this over there. And I like that, right? This is reorder parameters, right? Code rush refactorings are built for high speed changes. In general, if we don't have to, we won't show you a dialogue that'll block your code or force you to think in a different way. Absolutely. Um, all right. So, boom, I'm done. And at this point, I want to now reflect, right? What's the advantage of being able to write code without having to type in so many characters, right? Well, you're freeing up brain power, aren't you? You're well, going to spend less time thinking about the characters you're supposed to be hitting than the ceremony of the language in question and more time thinking about the problem you're trying to solve. Yeah. I think that's the most important benefit for developers of high-speed coding is not so that you can get the code done faster. It's so that you can spend more time focused on the essence of the problem, on the more interesting parts of the code, Yeah. right? Why do you want to spend so much time creating structure 
when you could create the structure effortlessly and now spend the time thinking about the algorithm, thinking about the design, thinking about how the classes work together, right? It's, it's all about solving the problem, not fighting the tool. Yeah, that I think is the number one benefit. The number two benefit uh, has to do with uh, RSI and carpal tunnel, right? Um, Good point. Afflictions that can be particularly uh, nasty for software developers who are often at the computer for long hours every day of their life. Right. Yeah. So uh, or, or, or certainly every workday of their life. Right. So um, by reducing the amount of times you're hitting the, the keyboard and, and also reducing the tension in the fingers. Right. We're taking a lot of the keystrokes that normally might be uh, 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 like, for example, shift keys and keys that are mm -hmm. not in the home keys, keys that are far away by giving you other ways to get that particular code by taking those keys and being able to generate those for you. Right. Yep. We're saving you a, a lot of the higher strain keys. Right. And so as a result, uh, the uh, uh, you may be able to stave off or prevent um, carpal tunnel or RSI uh, mm -hmm. by uh, by using the product. So yeah. um, from my perspective, also a huge, huge gain. Right. I am not going to uh, because I this is what I'm passionate about writing code. I'm not going to spend my life um, uh, doing it in a high strain way. No, that sounds perfectly reasonable to me, Mark. Absolutely right. And that's it. Well, that's fantastic, Mark. I mean, we've seen these videos one by one, um, features all over the place, helping us in many different ways. But it's nice to see it being brought together in a, a cohesive example of what can be done. You've taken uh, very few keystrokes, really, when you think about it, and produce quite a lot of code. As you say, there's a lot of symbol, symbols in, in C Sharp there, which you've avoided having to type because code rush symbols get round for you. There's a lot of things like constructors. You've never built a constructor there at all. And parameters, names of things. It's all so much simpler the way you've done it there. So again, a nice example, top to bottom, of how you can create a program from scratch with as little effort as possible. So thanks very much, Mark. We'll see you next time on Code Rush Feature of the Week. For more Feature of the Week videos, click one of the two video links on screen or select from our playlist. Download and learn more about Code Rush from the DevExpress website. And be sure to subscribe to our channel to receive all the latest Code Rush feature videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.